on to the third question. This will be the last time that you will be going first. And Rick Hartman has the question. Hi, I'm Rick Hartman. I'm the uh, president-elect of this fine Rotary Club. And uh, when you all join next year, I'll be your president. <laughs> first of all, Sandy and Alberta, thank you very much for coming today. Um, for lack of a better word, there's a lot of unrest in Madison right now. Do you feel that that's due to the changes in the policies themselves and the change in the issues? Or do you really feel that it's more about how things have been handled? And can you also tell me how you would specifically improve the situation in Madison? Well, I can tell you as uh, co-chair of finance, when we made the decision to um, balance the budget without raising taxes and make the tough decisions I talked about. We made the decision, and then the bans came in from all over the country. And, air, and a lot of people came in from all over the country, and they were not Wisconsinites who came to Wisconsin and said, we don't like the fact that you took on the, the major special interest groups, the unions, and the Wall Street Journal had the article that if we did what we did, try to give back power to our local voters and to local school boards and counties and municipalities. They were gonna take us out. They were gonna put a lot of money into Wisconsin and they came in with those vans, parked right in front of the Capitol. We did, we did a great business for Madison. They had a lot of new economic development. What I would do is change this to say, look, I'm gonna support the people who vote and the people who, uh, they put people in charge. I'm not going to support the special interest groups who say, we're going to rule here, not you, the voter. What is at stake here is the Democratic majority leader, or head of the Democratic Party said, we're going to flip three seats in the Senate. I am one of the targets. And we're going to get control of the, the Senate. And we're going to stop all these reforms. Because we're going to side up with the special interest groups and overturn the results of the 2000. 10 election and that is very serious that is very serious that these outsiders they say they are Wisconsin and some of them are but I'm telling you a lot of them are not and it's time we are Wisconsin takes back Wisconsin and elections are respected if you don't like what we did wait till the next election and vote other people in I think uh, Senator Darling's response speaks volumes as to what's wrong. People came here from Wisconsin, they came from her district, they called her and they said, what is happening, what you're doing, rushing through this extreme agenda that is gutting a lot of core issues in the state of Wisconsin has to stop, it has to slow down. And Senator Darling, as co-chair of the most powerful committee in Madison, could have done something. She could have pushed back, she could have said something. But to say this is just outside interest because she failed to listen to people and she can say, yeah, they're outside. No, they're her constituents. They're her constituents who were not being heard. And that's why they initiated this recall. What is happening isn't because of, of outside special interests. It's, it's happening. Well, it is. It's the outside special interests on the other side. And the fact that the Republican Party, the majority party, and Senator Darling stopped listening to people about what the impact of these tough, tough, mean cuts would be on their day-to-day -day life is why she is being recalled. Okay, now she gets a chance to answer the question, and would you like it again? Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, so because there's a lot in these questions. There's a lot, yeah, yeah, there's a lot in here. Yeah, um, there's a lot of unrest in Wisconsin, in Madison. Uh, do you feel that that's due to what the change in policies are, the content of the policies themselves? Or does it more have to do just as much or more about how things have changed and how things have happened? I think it's all of the above, actually. There's the process that this happened in a very rapid way, that we saw huge changes come into our state, things that were being rushed through. You know, there's a lot of discussion around the collective bargaining, and clearly that is something that sparked an interest and, and woke a lot of people up. They saw how important it was to make sure you got out and voted, how important it, it was to make sure you contacted your, your representatives and your senators about what was happening. So there's, there's this stuff being rushed through, but, but the other side just stopped listening. And they stopped listening by saying, if you don't agree with us, you don't have a seat at the table. If you don't listen to us, you don't agree with us, you don't have a seat at the table regarding collective bargaining. I've said over and over again, I don't agree with all unions. I've had a few 
issues that I've disagreed on, there are a lot of people I don't agree with. It doesn't mean they don't have a right to exist. And because you don't agree with someone doesn't mean you don't listen to them, that you don't have a voice at the table. There are 50% probably of the people in the state of Wisconsin who have not had their voices heard, their issues responded to, and their needs attended to because the Republican Party and Senator Darling have refused to listen to people, and they are responding to special interests. We see huge amounts of money being poured through. And as the co-chair of joint finance, we know that a lot of the special interest money have contributed to campaign interests. There is an outside influence happening, and we are shutting off the voice of the people of the state of Wisconsin. 30,000 people signed recall signatures against Senator Darling. And it's a reflection of really a toxic atmosphere in Madison, but it's also um, the, the policies that have been put through, put through in a very rapid manner. People are hurting. People are hurting seriously. And we have to attend to that. I'd be glad to talk about how we listen. The 2010 election said we want something different. We want you to get control of the spending, debt, and deficit. We want you to stop using the credit card. We want you to secure a future for our Wisconsin families. We want you to do it the hard way by getting control of the spending and, have, and live within your means. And we did it. And it's interesting to me, it's real easy to involve people when they leave the state. All my Democratic colleagues left the state. So we couldn't have a dialogue, so we couldn't have a vote, and shut down state government and for all intents and purposes for over three weeks. It could have been longer. To me, that is not the democratic process. The democratic process is you have elections. Elections have consequences. If you don't like what's happening, do make a change in the next election. We did. The 2000 election said, make a change. We did. We flipped the assembly, the Senate, and the governor's house. And you know what? If you don't like what we're doing, go vote in the 2012 elections and have a dialogue with the people. We listened to the people in 2010. Okay, now we've reached the halfway point. We're going to uh, switch where Representative Pash will answer the question first. We'll get a chance for the rebuttal and then to answer the question as well. Uh, so, uh, everybody's doing a good job of listening. I'm hearing a little bit of murmuring, so we'll just try to uh, keep it to ourselves until after it's all over, and then you'll get a chance to. Uh, weigh in if you want.